Hello everyone, my name is Grace Adewumi. I'm a product designer and um, I'm trying to do this. I'm doing this specifically for newcomers into tech. So this is an introduction sort of into software development, specifically software development. And um, so this has been requested by a few people that come, that DM me saying they want me to, I want you to mentor me, I want you to show me how to, how do I get started in the software development space or how do I become a designer, how did you start? People ask me a lot of questions. So a little backstory of mine is that I've been into software development. I've been into the software space actually for about 10 years and I started as a programmer. So I, I did that for a couple of years before transitioning and realizing that, okay, so there are so many solutions here, especially in our space here in Nigeria, that are badly or poorly designed. That was a couple of years ago. And um, so I was like, okay, this is something I'm actually interested in. I have empathy. I think I have empathy for users because I try to think from the user's point of view. So that was what led me to um, saying, let me go into um, designing for users. That's user experience design. So, um, so today I'll be talking about um, like who does what in software. So many people would have been seeing so many apps and websites and wondering like who does what. You'd be wondering like okay, so like Facebook for instance or Instagram or LinkedIn, like how exactly does this app work? Who builds it? Who are the people that came together to work together to build build this? And like how does it all work together? So that's basically what I'll be addressing today um so you probably have been wondering also like what what tools do they use um i use um, what tools i used actually to build this um software or this application and you're wondering okay how does everything all the stuff you can see and the things you cannot see how do these things fit together to form this thing that someone that knows nothing about um, the app can enjoy using so um, basically, there are three popular categorization of software that I'll be talking about. There are other categorizations, but I'll be focusing on three. That is the web apps, um, websites, and mobile app. Okay, let me say that again. Mobile. Let me start with mobile apps. Mobile apps, websites, and web apps. So those are the three categorizations of software I'll be talking about like um, today. So the first one, which is uh, mobile apps. So I'm sure a lot of us have heard mobile apps, mobile apps. So mobile apps are, is basically what you're using right now, probably, if you're using your phone to look at this. So like LinkedIn is a mobile app. Um, Facebook on your phone is a mobile app. Instagram is a mobile app. Um, games you play on your device are mobile apps. WhatsApp is a mobile app. So basically, you get the drift. So now, um, so if you're someone that's been wondering how do mobile apps come into existence? Um, so first thing is like, as now, I'm, we are talking about this from the point of view of an engineer, you that you are you're trying to build the um, app. So what happens is that you have to first decide as an engineer, what device do you want this um, application that I want to build to run on? Do I want it to run on Android or do I want it to run on iOS? So in case I'm wondering what's Android, what's iOS? Android is an operating system um, like Windows on a laptop then um, iOS is also an operating system, also like Windows on a laptop or Mac OS on a laptop. So um, Android runs on devices such as Samsung or Techno, all those kind of phones, while iOS runs on devices such as iPhone or iPads. Yeah. So um, you also have to ask yourself, okay, do I want this to, do I want this app to run on a mobile phone, or an Android phone, or an Android tablet, or I don't want it to run on um, an iPhone or an iPad, all those kind of questions. For instance, let's talk about iOS first. So iOS, for instance, for you to build an application on an iOS um, platform, that's like on an iPhone, for instance, you would have to, you need a software such as, um, a software that we call Xcode. So Xcode is basically a software that runs on, um, that you would have to run on an Apple system called a MacBook. So you use that to build. So I'm talking about base minimum right now. So there are other ways to do it, but this is like standard. So what you do is you run this um, application called Xcode to to um, build this particular um, this software that you want to 
that you want to run. So um, now, some people too have been wondering, like, okay, how do all these apps that I see on App Store, which is like the place where all software or applications that run on iPhones, for instance, are downloaded from. So how do these applications get there? So what you do is, what people do is, after developing the application on using Xcode, for instance, you, you'd sell or you'd upload your application to the App Store for iPhone users or iPad users to be able to get access to and then download to their mobile phone. So that's how that works in a nutshell. So um, the tools or the language you used to to design or to develop your um, I, iOS or your um, your iPhone apps, such as Facebook or LinkedIn, I use the popular ones as example, would be tools or languages such as Objective C or Swift. So I'm throwing these words around. So if there's stuff that you don't understand what I'm saying, feel free to just like comment and just ask questions. So. Um, now let me quickly jump on to Android. So Android, many of us are familiar with Android. So Android is basically again the I/O, the the OS, the operating system that runs on device on devices such as Samsung or um, Nokia, for instance. So or Techno, there are many of them. So now, what you do to build an Android software is you have to think about okay, so. It's the same. It's just similar, actually. It's very, very similar to that. The same thing of um, building an I iPhone or iOS um, application. So what you do is you need tools. In this case, you need a tool such as um, Android Studio to be able to build. That. Again, I'm talking about base minimum standard here. So you need such a tool to be able to um, write the codes. You have to write the code to be able to um, build um, to to build the application you're trying to um, develop. Yes, yeah, so this application could run on, say, a Mac OS or a, reg, um, or a PC, such as a Windows device, HP or whatever. So now, again, just, just like um, the iOS we talked about just a moment ago. So you sell an Android device or you upload an, an sorry, not device, I meant application. So you upload or sell an Android um, application on what they call Play Store. So, so you know when a friend or someone wants to tell you like download that um, application, they tell you go to Play Store or go to App Store. So, how that gets there is a developer has developed it, and then it was uploaded to that place. Approval was gotten from the um, from the authorities there on App Store or on um, Play Store, and then it was uploaded. And then anyone, a user, comes and then downloads a user such as me and you. So. Um, language that is used for developing Android um, software includes um, Java or Kotlin, like you may have heard. So I'm throwing a lot of languages and all that in the air right now. Okay, so basically, um, to conclude this part, um, for you to code or for you to develop, um, for you to develop a an iOS or an Android software, you need a tool. You need a particular system first, then you need a particular software on it, such as an Android, Android Studio for Android or Xcode for iOS, and then you write the codes and then upload it to either Play Store or App Store, basically. Now, jumping on to websites. So websites, that's the second one. So websites are basically just informational, they're just for showing information. For instance, either a school website just to display some information as per courses and all those kind of things, or say a salon website just to display some information such as the opening time, the closing time, or a food business just to show you the kind of stuff that they cook and maybe show you just, just basically for information. That's the idea behind websites. So for you to develop a website, that's, that's basically, um, it's not that not difficult. So you need tools such as a text file, text file meaning notepad or wordpad, or some other tools such as um, Sublime Text. There are advanced tools as well, but again, I'm talking about base minimum. So you use uh, this particular kind of tool, and then once you write the codes for that in a, in a language called HTML and CSS and JavaScript, I'm really not going deep. This is just introduction. So once you write the codes in the text file, using any of these tools I mentioned a moment ago, then you run your codes in the browser. So you run that file in the browser, and there you see the website. Okay. 
So, uh, moving down to web apps, that's like the, the third of the three I mentioned earlier. So again, we mentioned mobile apps, we mentioned website, and we mentioned web apps. So now web apps is, web app is basically a website, just that this is an advanced website. It's an advanced website that runs, um, that runs with algorithms and um, functions. Don't be bothered about the words algorithm and function. Basically, a website is something like Facebook. Like if you open Facebook in your browser on your laptop, then that's a website. If you open Facebook on your phone, then that's a mobile app. If you, if you are looking at, say, um, say a website, if it was a, let's say a school website, for instance, that now does more than just information, but it has um, where you can log in, like many schools have this, you can log in, you can create an account, you can log in, you can register for your course and all that, that is a web app. So that's the basic difference between a website and a web app. Okay, so um, languages that are used to develop a web app are, there are so many. It depends on choice, actually. So we have Ruby, we have Python, we have React, yes, we have, um, we have so many, really, so many. And I'm coming on to the different types in a moment. And then, um, so we have something we call, we call databases. So let me just touch on that. Database is basically where the information that is gotten from, um, from the user's point of view, that is like, if, if, you would, if it was a registration site, for instance, let's say a school, a school um, web app where students can register. So if students register on that particular app, and then they register with their email address, their password, their names and all that. Where that is stored is what we call database. So if you have heard database before, it's just that simple. It's just like a bank for information. Yeah, a bank in the cloud for information. Okay, so, um, so basically, conclusively, we'll say that web apps are similar to websites, just that they are developed with more powerful languages and they are, um, we just say they are more, a little bit more powerful because they, are, they run with algorithms and you can do much more than a regular informational website. Okay, so um, the last part of this talk is to talk about like the people that are involved in creating whether a web app or a website or a mobile app. So there are three major group of people. There are many people actually, so many people involved with this process, but the major ones I want to talk about right now are designers, front-end developers and back-end developers. So designer is basically the person that thinks about the problem and then thinks about the people that are having a problem, thinks about proposed solution or possible solution, and then thinks about okay, how the solution will actually run. So that's a designer. And then actually creates, like designs the solution, what you can see. So you see how I didn't say designer is somebody that draws, that draws stuff and just makes stuff look pretty. No, that's not all there is to a designer. We'll talk about this like, in the next, maybe in the next two sessions, I think. Okay, so that's basically where a designer is, and a designer uses tools such as Adobe XD or Sketch or Figma. So those are three popular ones. There are many other ones like InVision and, and so on. Those are three major ones. And then a designer hands off designs to a front-end developer. So that's the bridge between a designer and the other people on the team. Now, the second person is the front-end developer. So the front-end developer is who translates the designs that he got from the um, designer into codes, something that you can actually play with. So it's not just what you can see anymore, but it's now something that you can actually like play with. So like if it was like a web app, so it's something you can view in the browser. That's the codes we were talking about earlier. Or if it was a mobile app, then that's something you can kind of touch like play with on your on your device. So now, uh, mind you, the front-end developer creates the, the body. So imagine like a car, right? So, okay, if I come to that analogy, let me quickly talk about the back-end developer. So the back-end developer is someone, someone that basically creates the engine. So like creates the engine of the vehicle and then, um, or the engine of the solution in this case. So a back-end developer uses tools such as um, Python, Node.js, and a front-end developer uses tools such as HTML, CSS, JavaScript, like the ones we mentioned earlier, and also React.js, more advanced ones like React.js and Node, um, Vue.js. There are so many, actually. So now, back to the back-end developer. So the back-end developer writes what we mentioned earlier. That's the algorithms and the um, functions that makes 
that thing that the front end person was writing to actually connect to what we mentioned earlier, the database, like the bank of the of the um, information. So that's basically, those are the three major people. Now there are so many other people, like I mentioned earlier, that um, that work together in in this and then maybe we'll talk about maybe i'll talk about it when i'm running up so now the um to let you understand how the designer the front end and the back end people work together just think of a car so a car has the beautiful nice bends you like from outside that's basically the job of like say the front end developer so so that's basically the job of the front end developer and then the the, the car that car on its own cannot move if there's no engine, right? Yeah, right. So the, uh, the job of the backend developer is to create the engine, to make sure that, okay, this beautiful looking thing can actually move. So that's how a backend developer and a front end, that's like the best analogy I can think of right now. Then while the designer is a person that from the very beginning thought about the problem that the user faces, which is to move from one place to the other, and then he thought about, okay, so what's the real problem? Is it like, I mean, we really need to move from one place to the other. Okay, so if it's like five people, so we need to create a space bus instead of just a, a bike, right? So if it's just one person, okay, we don't really need a space bus, so we need something like a bike. So that kind of thing. So that's, the designer thinks about that problem, thinks about the people that are having the problem, and then thinks about, okay, so what's the best solution? What kind of body would we use to develop this so that the user would get attracted to it, to actually want to purchase it or drive it, and how do we even make this um, vehicle easy to use? So now this, the designer, um, to back up a bit, the designer is not just someone that is involved with just software development, but we'll talk about that another day. But in the context of software development and technology, that's who a designer is, and that's who a front-end developer is, and that's who a back-end developer is. So um, just to wrap up, there are so many people involved in this process. We have so many, many, many people, but these are three major people, and I really hope that you enjoyed this. If you think someone else needs to know about this, please tag them or share this, comment, like it, basically whatever it is you need to do to get in front of somebody else that needs this information. So <clears throat> next session, I'll probably be talking about um, how do you know which one you should be and um, should you choose your what, what you want to do based on profit or based on the direction of the industry right now or based on your personal interest. Is there some innate ability you should have before you choose one particular field and all that. So that's what we'll be talking about in the next session. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.